Hello and welcome to this video which will explore the different carbon emission scenarios which are available on the C3S Climate and Energy Education Demonstrator Tool. Let us take a look at a typical plot from the tool. This plot shows Germany's average temperatures for each year with the orange plot showing historical temperatures, but also two other plots, both of which projections into the future based on a combination of climate models. These plots are based on two different carbon emission scenarios, one high in purple and one low in blue. To understand both why these different scenarios are necessary and what they mean, let's take a step back. It has been long established now that carbon dioxide is one of the main drivers of temperature change. With that in mind, we need to look back at historical levels of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere before we can project future levels. This is a particularly famous plot showing carbon dioxide levels recorded on a regular basis since the 1950s in Hawaii, which shows today's levels or concentration at around 410 parts per million. So looking into the future, will this concentration continue to increase, level off or decrease? Of course, this is very dependent on human activity, whether we choose to produce renewable energy that does not emit much carbon, reduce our energy use, engage in activities to meet international agreements like the Paris Climate Agreement, or whether fossil fuels are continued to be used to fuel industrialization, particularly in emerging economies. So those who use climate models to project temperature changes into the future can run them under different carbon emission scenarios. And these have a technical name, representative concentration pathways or RCPs for short. The word concentration, meaning that the models run based on the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere due to the emissions that we generate. Now there are four different RCPs and we won't go into the technical details here. That is something that requires further background reading. However, two of them are used in our tool. What we term as a high emission scenario is RCP 8.5. And as you can see from the red line on this graph, this assumes that concentrations continue to increase and reach an equivalent of 1,250 parts per million by 2100. That's three times higher than today's levels. The low emission scenario used by the tool is RCP 4.5. This is where concentrations stabilize at around 550 parts per million by the middle of the century. But what do both of these mean in terms of climate change and temperature? Going back to our annual air temperature graph for Germany, we can see that by 2100, it is projected that under a low emission scenario, RCP 4.5 where carbon concentration stabilize, the average yearly temperature in Germany could be around 11 degrees Celsius. In contrast, in a scenario where the concentrations continue to rise, the temperature could be above 13 degrees Celsius on average. Compare both of these to the historical average, measured by the mean temperature between 1981 and 2010, you'll see that that's an increase between two and just over four degrees, depending on the scenario. Now, if you're thinking that neither of these don't seem much of an increase, you need to bear in mind that these are increases in the average over a climate timescale, not to be confused with short-term changes over a weather timescale. It's also important to learn the difference between weather and climate. Let us use an example of a past extreme weather event to understand what these increases may actually mean. Let us take a look at one of the most infamous heat waves to hit Europe in recent times, the 2003 European heat wave. France in particular suffered the brunt of this extreme weather event and at the peak of the heat wave in August, Paris almost broke 40 degrees Celsius during the day. Paris's summer average for 2003 was 22.31 degrees Celsius. And as you can see from the graph, that average is way above any other summer historically up to 2016. If we take another look, this time using temperature anomaly, we can see that the summer of 2003 in France very clearly. 
and it was 3.25 degrees Celsius above that 1981 to 2010 mean temperature. Looking at projections into the future, this extreme unusual summer temperature becomes common and normal from about 2070 onwards in a high carbon emission scenario. A low carbon emission scenario shows projected average temperatures to not be so high. To finish off, let me refer you to a recent study by the UK Met Office based on their latest climate modelling efforts. Currently, the United Kingdom in particular, the southeast of England, experiences two consecutive days or more with temperatures 30 degrees Celsius or above. However, under a high emission scenario, this situation could occur four times every year by 2070. And this is really an indication that what we historically classify as an extreme and abnormal heat event could simply become the norm in the near future. Thank you for watching. Please do visit the tool using this web link here to explore how different emission scenarios give you different projections for the future. Also feel free to use the hashtag C3SEDUMC to both explore and share your experiences of using the tool on social media.